So one thing that's uh, very misunderstood is um, detonation in an engine and how it's affected by different things being fuel or intake air temp, uh, coolant temp, et cetera, et cetera. And so there was, uh, there was an SAE paper that I had. I wish I could freaking find it. And the paper was basically um, comparing the knock resistance of different fuels uh, in relation to intake air temp charge or charge temperature. And so they had a couple engines that tested. Um, one of them was a Mazda direct injected um, car. And in that they went through and they put different fuels in it, got to see how well it knocked or didn't knock in different fuel types, including ethanol. And so what they ended up with was basically a graph. And again, I, I don't have that darn article saved. I can't find it. Um, and I know that claims are no good without data. I'm gonna paraphrase, paraphrase that and then show you what some manufacturers have done. So anyways, at the, end, at the end is they had this graph and the graph showed, uh, look kind of like this. And the bottom axis was intake air temperature and above that was the NOx. It was the tendency of the fuel to detonate. And so what they found was that over 120, you can see that it gets really, really steep. And obviously the initial change happens down low and it, and it goes across the whole board, there's a change. But the difference from 120 and up was dramatic. They had these huge, huge increases in, uh, in detonation um, on these engines as intake air temp increases. Now, that was a pump gas. But with ethanol, it was, it was pretty cool because ethanol, I'm just gonna draw it, it's kinda like this. Uh, it can start a little higher here, and then it went down lower, and it was like that. Like that might be a slight exaggeration, but it was extremely stable, and wasn't nearly as affected um, uh, by intake air temp. And yeah, that's been a, a factor of of the octane as well as just the amount of mass that ethanol has when you put it um, in your engine. Sorry, I'm just gonna get crooked there. Anyways, so one thing people forget is. When you have a turbocharged car, uh, you often run um, air fuels that are richer than stoic, which is expected. And the reason for that is one, heat management. That's one of the biggest ones, right? Controlling heat. If you put extra fuel mass into the cylinder, you that fuel mass will absorb heat from it and take that heat away from the chamber and away from the piston and away from all that stuff to minimize the chance of detonation. Um, when you go to ethanol, people are like, oh yeah, octane fucking rules. And they're right, octane does fucking rule. And so they run ethanol um, to utilize that better octane. It's cheaper per gallon. It's all, it's really awesome. You know, race gas at the, can at the pump basically. Um, but one of the downsides that you need to have a fuel system that has about 30% more, um, more flow rate. And what people forget is that now I'm putting 30% more mass into the cylinders. And so I'm already getting um, a bunch more heat carried out after the combustion events. So we have, uh, just by nature, a, a more stable um, condition in the cylinder as it is. And so a lot of the guys are, oh, if you're in ethanol, you still gotta run it really, really rich. Well, you don't have to run that rich because you already have a bunch of extra mass in there that you didn't have with the gasoline before. So some people forget about that. But what they also screw up a lot is they take these timing compensation tables that are in the ECU, they're there because of this, and they flatten them out. So here's an example, and I'm gonna show you, this is my evidence that what I'm telling you is true. These are factory maps by manufacturers. So this is Volkswagen, and you can see here, over 100, 120, 140, they're pulling a lot of timing out. Okay, it's a factory VW map. And we go, this one, this one's Ford, right? Yep, yeah, this was Ford. You can see the multiplier jumps up dramatically over 110, 110, to 150, they're pulling out, this is a unit of 50, that's a multiplier times another value, but you see how, how steep that gets. All of a sudden you hit that threshold, right? Uh, here's another one. This is uh, the GTR over 120. They start to implement a uh, correction for intake air temp. Again, based, that one's based on load um, and intake air temp over 122. Um, this one is an evolution. So Mitsubishi, you see by 133, they've pulled two degrees and five by, or three by 185. That's actually really conservative compared to a lot of other brands. Um, Uh-oh, I got more. Subaru, this is factory for an STI 04. You see they just tank the timing from 120 up to 140. They're pulling six degrees 
out of it. They're really uh, trying to protect the engine there. This is HV Tuners, this is Chevy. Chevy as well. Let me go to the other graph view for you. If I turn that, right? So those kind of look like the inverse of that. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious what the manufacturers are telling us. That they are quite aware that pump gas has a much higher knock tendency over 100, 120 degrees. And so I tell people this a lot of time because I'll, I'll get a lot of uh, tunes, especially in the Chevy community, where um, somebody's like, hey man, my carb loop, can you look at my tune for me? I'm like, yeah, no problem. And I look at this table and they've taken this at the high load and they just plussed it a bunch. They're like, oh yeah, we'll just add some fucking timing in there. Uh, I can't do it here because I'm doing it wrong because this is issue tuners. And they've added timing in here and it's no longer going to, to minus six, seven, and eight up here in this high air, air temps. It's only going to three and it's zero all the way here or even plus something all the way through here. And their shit blew up because they run a pump gas on boost, right? Now, if you run an ethanol, you can absolutely modify this table. Because if you run an ethanol, based on that curve that you saw that I, I drew on there, the stability is way higher. So you could keep the timing all the way in until 120 and then start pulling a little bit out you know, over time. It doesn't even have to be that much either. It could be half of that amount. Right? You can do that with ethanol. But if you're running pump gas, it's really important that your charge temperature is affecting your ignition advance or you're going to blow that thing up. If you have an NA car that you add a turbo to and you don't have an intercooler on it, well, that's a classic example of a case where you really need to watch it because now you have high compression on top of boost. Like, it doesn't make any sense. So it's really critical that you watch those charge temps and make sure that you have the proper timing compensation, you know, coming out of them. I, I told some guy about that today on the forums, and he just laughed at me as if it was some, I don't know, some snake oil or some shit, you know. But it's very true. Every manufacturer does it for a damn good reason because the data is there. So when you're doing your tuning and you see these tables and you're like, oh man, that's way too much time to pull. I have to ask you, is it? And how do you know? If you don't have any data to support it, why would you change it? These guys have million dollar budgets and whole teams of calibrators gathering data and tuning these cars and you're just one person. So don't ever assume that you know more than the engineers do at these uh, at the OEM level. Just remember that they're really smart and have little, huge budget, budgets that you don't have. And uh, I guess that's it. So just be smart with your timing. That's the lesson.